All right, Tundra people. First gen Tundra 2005 had the uh, issue with the first gear uh, solenoid in the cha in the transmission, and uh, pop the connector off on the the uh, the wiring harness, and two of the pins were corroded and basically all the uh, all the tinned copper or whatever it is on the terminal was gone. So I've heard of a couple of these happening, a couple of these harnesses fail, and it's the, and it's the harness inside the transmission that fails. So I found one obscure video on, uh, on an FJ Cruiser that had the same transmission but four-wheel drive um, on how to change the fluid because you have to open up the transmission to get that harness out. So I wanted to make a Tundra-specific video, and here we go. So the, the book calls for Toyota ATF WS, and you'll need about four quarts to do this with the filter. You, I think you can do the harness without taking the filter out, but I figured while I was in there, I'd do it. Now for my 2005, there was it was a little confusing on what the what filter I actually needed because you jump on eBay or Amazon and you can get OEM filters, but you know two or three of the part numbers will will say they fit, and then you go to Toyota's website and it doesn't fit. So I, I went to Cancelli Toyota parts and uh they're good. those guys are really good about getting you to the right stuff so that's the filter i've got it does not come with an o-ring on the back here so you have to order that separate that's the o-ring that i that i found fit by pairing this part number up when just research even though the uh the toyota website said this doesn't fit the truck but we'll see it should just fit the filter right there and then the important part here is this wiring harness. There's part number there. So what actually went bad is, like I said, two of the terminals in here. Now I don't know if it's because the the solenoid uh, went bad and it calls a short, but I mean it it really just looked like corrosion got into this harness somehow and and it damaged those two terminals and it just happened to be the first gear solen shift solenoid so while I'm you know while I'm in there I thought about replacing the solenoid but you know there's a good chance that it's perfectly fine so I'm gonna try it this way it's easy enough to to drop the pan and change the fluid out or you know change this harness out so if it if it is that first gear shift solenoid then I'll just replace it later but I'm not worried about doing that again because I don't mind working on this truck. All right, so I'm gonna take us underneath and show you some things on the transmission side. All right, here we go under the truck. All right, so right there, that's our harness, the, the wiring harness that it's got the corrosion, the uh, larger connector there. These guys are, they've got this awesome cam lock system. It gives you positive feedback that you've got the connector in. So push in on that little tab there, and it'll cam down, and you'll see it lift up right there. Oh, all the way. I think bring it out. So now, when I initially took this out, these top two right pins here had a lot of. Uh, Look like copper corrosion there and I, I had cleaned it off with some electrical parts cleaner so it's not quite there but I can still see a little bit of green in there so the last part of this whole ordeal will be popping the uh, the black lock cover here off and then taking a little deep pinning tool and popping those two terminals out and seeing how bad the terminals are because if they're super corroded and not you know and even with the new transmission side harness they still may not offer up any uh, good cont uh, uh, continuity between the between the circuits so might have to actually cut back the wiring harness and replace those terminals and hopefully I've, I've got those on hand but if not it's that's another order from Toyota you can buy individual terminals very very expensive but you can all right so now on to the hard parts so on the bottom of the transmission pan here we've got what looks like all right 
two drain plugs. So this guy right here, if I, if I remember correctly, is not actually a drain plug. I'm sorry, there, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the overfill drain. So when we, when, when we go to fill this thing back up, this has actually got a tube that goes up and it's open on the top so once it once the fluids in there and it's up to operating temp if it's too much fluid it'll actually spill out and just come out there once you crack that guy loose and then the other one down there is our standard drain plug so that was the most confusing thing about this transmission since it doesn't have a dipstick is like yeah how do you how the hell do you know it's it's full that's how that guy right there and once we drop the pan you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. And then on the fill side, this is a two-wheel drive model. Uh, get the light, there we go. This right there, that guy. Uh, right there, the large, I think it's like a 23 or 24 millimeter. I always end up using a standard wrench on these guys. Toyota has used the same plugs since the 80s. So, that should be the fill port. Now in the four-wheel drive models, it's in a sim similar location, but you know, your tail shaft looks different. So, or your tail shaft housing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my oil pan and start draining this beast. I need my truck back. All right, so good rule of thumb. Whenever doing dry, when you're doing drivetrain work, always crack your fill plugs open first. You know, in this case, it wouldn't matter. I'd have to, I'd have to figure it out anyway, if, because I have to open it. But if you were just changing the fluids, always make sure you do this. Because if this is boogered, then you may not want to drain anything, because then you still have the vehicle at least. But like I said, I'm kind of SOL, so I've got to figure it out. So I'm using a, like I said, a standard wrench, eleven or fifteen sixteenths, because it is in fact like a twenty three. So. Let's see if we can break this. Loose. All right, good. Feels like threads are good. Oh yeah. bit of fluids right there right on it so 100% that's our fill plug the little rubber o-ring there all right I'm just gonna put that finger tight and move on to the pan let's see looks like our I've got a lot of 10 mils going all the way around and then this uh, that overflow drain plug there that is actually a five millimeter hex so talk about a pain in the ass if that strips. All right, let's get a few of these out and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, actually we need to drain this first. What am I thinking? All right, well that looks like a 14. Oh yeah, good shit. Uh, 
snug that back up. Dripping now. I'm gonna start on these 10 mil heads, M6 bolts. Working around the pan. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the drain plug back in there, just to avoid any drips, any more drips on me. I don't know about you guys, but I hate transmission fluid. There's a gasket. I didn't realize Toyota used gaskets on their newer stuff. All the old stuff that just did FIPG. These are kind of tight. There's the first broken one. That's brilliant. All right, since that's happening, oh. all right. So the holes are, yeah, the, the holes are through through holes. So we can spray some some uh, penetrant on the top here to get at least the side ones. No guarantee on the back ones, but since they're not open, I bet the corrosion hasn't seeped in. So they'll probably break loose like these two did, real easy. So. I'm going to grab that and keep going. Alrighty. So, got my controlled fall here. Take this one out. That one's ready. Still got some fluid in it. Out of the filter, Pretty typical. Drain pan underneath the filter. And then I can sit this oil pan on the ground very carefully so it don't spill what fluid's left in it. That's it actually to catch some of the other drips because that oil pan's not. Whoop, that little pan is not big enough. All right, let me grab the camera and we'll look at some stuff here. All right. Let's see if we can get a good angle on this. So, that's where our harness comes in, right there. I'm not exactly sure which one's first gear solenoid, but I'm assuming it's one with two wires. Given that's a solenoid, but I mean, who knows. I didn't look at the specifics on these guys. But then the harness comes around here, ends up right there and finishes. So, gotta pop the connectors off. Look pretty. There's a, like loose connectors that are a pain in the ass because they're you have to use a little a little deep pinning tool or miniature flathead screwdriver and just pry up on the housing just slightly. Sometimes you can actually squeeze the sides, the left and right side, and pull them out. Uh, but these are all covered in oil, so they're super slick. 
Everything looks really nice and clean, though. Alright, so I'm gonna... Yeah, this one's real easy. That's an old, old connector Toyota's used for a long time. Alright, so... I'm gonna go ahead and... Start unplugging after this drips for a little bit, and then we'll uh, we'll sh show you pulling the harness out. All right, to clean up some of this. I'll use some brake clean. Make this a little bit easier. Get those connectors off. Looks like there's a wire clip there. It's easy, it just popped right out. Alrighty. Let's see what these guys look like. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get my little V pen tool for those. Those look like they're the same. Yep, so this one has a little tang that you can press. This green guy. Tang on the top, you can press and slide that guy out. And then that one's the one of those old school connectors. It's out easy. That one comes out easy. Alright, let me grab that tool. Or a little pick, actually. That should be all that I need. And then we'll get the rest of these out. Alright, I'm gonna try to get a close-up on this to show you, and then won't we'll be able to do it with one hand though. Alright, so see right there, there's a little bump on the white connector. That guy is what's being held up by this so with your little screwdriver depending tool or pick you come in here you put a little upward pressure like up and then at the same time put a little tension on the on the harness here and the connector and then pull it out and you don't want to mar this up too much because that's the only thing holding that connector in same thing applies for that guy and the ones on the other side so I'll try to do that now Oh, some uh, fluid just <laughs> flew up my face. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. Oh, actually, it looks like there's a connector underneath the filter. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to pause there. I'm actually going to plug that guy back in so it doesn't fall down anymore. Not that it would fall very far. I'm going to pop this filter off. Now, there's going to be a fair amount of fluid that comes out when this filter comes out because it's airlocked in up into the valve body. So, we will grab the 10 mil and crack this guy loose. And we'll use the electric wrench. And I dropped it right in the oil. And that one in the oil too. They're slippery. I got you, bitch. Let's see where it gets from. Oop. Back there. Okay. 
scoot the pan out of the way. Bring the drain pan. Actually, you know what? I grabbed two drain pans because I knew this was going to be a pain. So, I'm going to try to capture some of this. Let me get a better grip on this. Alright. So, the, the side up here. Let me make sure we can. That's got the O ring on it on that side on the, the riser. So, that's where a lot of our fluid's going to come out. And there we go. Alright. Now, it looks like. Not as much fluid came out as I was expect. Oh, there it is. It's in the filter. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Cool. Now, I just noticed that this O-ring stayed up in here. So when you're doing that, take note, make sure that your O-ring comes off with... Comes out with a filter. Now, that does look a little different than my new filter, so I'm going to have to do a dry fit and see, see if that actually fits. In the meantime... This guy's gonna go right in the drain pan. Alright. That'll stay there. Catch the drippings. I'm gonna go fishing for two bolts before I forget about them. One thing I've learned if you drop something, look for it right away. Otherwise, you may lose it forever. And there we go. Yeah, so that last bit of the harness came underneath the filter, or on top of the filter. Swung around and looks like we've got two more connectors here. Now those are weird looking. I'm not sure about those yet. All right. All right, so after looking at the new harness, it appears that those are some kind of sensor or something that protrudes in, up into the valve body. And we've got these little plates here that are holding them in so we don't actually disconnect anything. That whole assembly is part of the harness. I'm not going to drop this one in the oil. There we go. There's that guy. And we'll slide all right so that come that, that slides towards the back of the truck and off so the the mouth down here towards the front of the vehicle and then this should pull straight down yep there's some oil just like I thought all right I'll try to get the other one Ooh. That bolt's a lot longer. All right, there. All right, this one, it looks like it's the same deal. The slot goes, opens towards the front of the vehicle, but it does not look like there's enough space to slide it apart. So it's gotta come out with the harness. Okay, yep, correct. Comes out with the harness. But same thing, slot towards the front of the vehicle. Set that one aside. Grab the pick again. Go picking. I'm gonna have to. So you won't really be able to access this from the front very well to to, to get these terminal or these connectors out. You really got to come in from the back. Just enough pressure and it slides out. You know, take your time with these, because, like I said, once you break that, there's nothing else holding that connector in. Alright. That's... Good to go. Alright, so there's the majority of the harness out. 
and it looks like there's sliding that past a little tab there and then one M6 10 mil head up top and we can pop the harness up and out okay Oh, that one's fucking tight. Man, I really hope this guy doesn't break. I'm going to take my time with this one. I might actually trying to spray some lubricant up there from the bottom because it does have a through hole but the location of this through hole does not permit drilling of that bolt in the event that it breaks unless the transmission is out of the vehicle and I really don't want to pull a transmission This is the, uh, this is a good example of those memes that we see. It'll be done in an hour. Ten hours later. All right, I got a couple little tools. Hopefully, will help. All right, so there is a steel insert in this connector housing where the bolt goes. I'm betting that has galled up with the uh, with the bolt, and that's preventing this from coming out. There we go. Holy crap. What a nightmare. All right. Now this is the easy part. Just fish this guy out. deal with that nightmare. I'll bring it up here and get some light on the situation. Yeah. See that guy? That's the sleeve out of the, uh, on that harness, on that, that whole block right there. And I do believe it is galled up on that stud. So maybe, just maybe, and get lucky and I can get some channel hammers on this guy and break it loose and I got the torch here as well which I'm gonna move this harness out of the way and uh, 
heat this guy up first. I'm gonna put a little test pressure on it just to see, get a feel for it first. I can even get. Okay, I've got still got the plastics. These channel hammers are too big. And these are hard to get leverage on because they're so small. It's completely screwing me. Oh yeah, so it's turning. So maybe, just maybe, we can get lucky and just spin the whole thing out. Threading itself from the bolt. Yep. Oh, no. Bolt just broke off flush. Oh yeah, that thing was galled up completely. Wow. This is a nightmare. This is literally a nightmare. There's no way to get that inside of the truck. Well, <laughs> This is one of those times where you just want to sit the tools down and walk inside the air conditioning. Oh. Okay. Let's regroup.